Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. I'm here with Jeff Frick. We're here at Knowledge. ServiceNow's big customer event. Uh, we're at the Aria Hotel. A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of great stories. We're seeing a pattern emerge. IT is essentially this collection of disparate processes. We have a lot of activity going on in spreadsheets, uh, people using email to really keep track of what's going on. Um, many, many systems trying to keep track of inventory, assets, uh, processes, problems, incidents, changes, et cetera, et cetera, and it's just this big web of mess. <laughs> Here comes ServiceNow, uh, a, a single system of record, a CMDB that allows you to essentially tailor your processes to your business as opposed to some kind of technology module or some other kind of, 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 of software system. Jason Wojan is here. He's the Vice President of Operations for uh, Cloud Sherpas, works within the ServiceNow business unit at Cloud Sherpas, who's a big sponsor of the show. Jason, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So, you heard my little intro. Um, you guys must be excited, big sponsor, a lot of, a lot of action going on in this, uh, in this event. How do you feel? We feel uh, outstanding. We're happy to be a part of the, the, the event. This is my third knowledge conference, and of course, uh, um, as uh, the director of training in, in ServiceNow, I like to say there are more people in training at this conference than attended the entire Knowledge 11 conference, so it's a pretty phenomenal event. So how has it progressed over the years? This is my first Knowledge, and so I don't have that uh, history. I'd say that uh, you know, we, uh, we've had a long legacy with ServiceNow, all the way back to some of the very first Knowledge conferences that occurred, and uh, first Knowledge conference, uh, we probably could have had a, the entire conference uh, in this table, right? <laughs> and uh, of course today with almost 4,000 attendees, it's, it's certainly grown tremendously. Uh, we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 people that have gone through training at this event alone. Uh, we did a big part of uh, providing that training for on behalf of ServiceNow with other partners as well, and it's an exciting event. There's a, a large buzz here, as I'm, I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, it yeah, really absolutely. is. Yeah, so Cloud Sherpa, other than a great name, you know, tell us about the, the company. <laughs> it's, a great, uh, it's a great story to tell. Uh, Gartner likes to uh, coin a term, a cloud services brokerage. And so first and foremost, we're a cloud services brokerage. We have uh, three strategic partnerships. Uh, we are a, a Salesforce uh, a partner. We are one of the largest Salesforce partners in the world, actually top five from a certification standpoint. We're the largest Google Enterprise Integrator in the world. Uh, we're actually Google, uh, Google's partner of the year in 2011 and 2012. Of course, we like to think we're pretty good at ServiceNow as well. A little background on us in the ServiceNow business unit. We were the first partner in the United States for, for ServiceNow. We were the first partner to achieve preferred status at, at ServiceNow and the only partner to achieve that status globally today. So how's it work? So uh, a customer wants to implement ServiceNow or Google Enterprise or, or Salesforce. You basically are that brokerage layer in between. So talk about how that works. Well, we help customers adopt, manage, and enhance. Uh, their cloud solutions, of course, focusing on this uh, particular context, ServiceNow. And uh, we're there from day one. We're there to help them bring the platform into their environment. We're help, there to help them refine their processes and practices. And of course, ultimately align that to the ServiceNow uh, tool and help them manage that through their life cycle. So how do you get ready for this? What do you tell customers they need to do? I tell customers commonly it's best to start where you're at with any improvement activity and, and ultimately in an enterprise uh, deployment of software, you're going to take that as an opportunity to improve I say start where you're at. Take the time to understand how you do things today. You'd be surprised to see how often customers don't, aren't all, all on the same page as to how they perform incident or what the key processes are underneath that or even what the key performance objectives are for that. Of course, we recommend starting where you're at. Of course, we have requirements workshops opportunities. We have a number of, of ITEL practices and other types of areas where we can help elaborate those requirements and better align them to their business needs. But first and foremost, you need to understand what you want your environment to look like from a requirement standpoint. The workflows are key. So what are the big obstacles that you see uh, people running into when they try to do implementations like this? I would say, in general, taking too big of a bite. You know, there are over 22 applications, as an example, in ServiceNow. You don't want to start day one with 22 applications. It's not because ServiceNow wouldn't be able to handle it. ServiceNow can deploy very rapidly, no, scale You wouldn't very be able rapidly. to handle it. <laughs> Customers can't handle it, right? <laughs> start simple, start where you're mature, or start where you have the most uh, profound opportunity to improve and align to better practices. Get the foundation of the platform in place, stabilize that, and then move on to your next phase and progressively adopt more and more of the application. So it's, it's with the pattern that's emerging here, we're hearing from customers, is people starting with incident, problem management, change management. Um, you know, why there? Why, why do we see that pattern emerging? I think more across the industry, that it tends to be a place where customers have, have focused on over time, so that tends to be where they're more mature. 
They tend to have a better understanding of, of maybe what their shortcomings are today in those spaces, so they tend to be an easier place to start. So what percentage of them are displacing some other legacy uh, software versus, we've heard about, I'm not counting Excel in that, in that list or, or Lotus Notes, because we hear a lot about that, but I would presume there's, some, there's other software out there that they're displacing. We see a lot of software that gets displaced. Um, uh, there are, of course, uh, point solutions where there's a lot of, uh, of databases and homegrown applications handling change or change approvals or cab boards or those types of things. So, of course, it's a good opportunity to consolidate that. And, of course, you know, ServiceNow is known within the industry as being a pretty proficient solution, but there are other solutions, and we are often seeing that uh, we're offsetting those as well. You have, uh, we have this theme of no to now. Do you have any you know, favorite examples that you can share with us? Or what are some of your customers doing? Uh, we've know? got a, a lot of good examples. I would say uh, probably most recently we just helped a very large uh, clothing manufacturer, an American, good American company that uh, uh, had nine support uh, environments globally and they had nine different ways of doing everything. And they use this as an opportunity to consolidate those and get to a single source of record, get to a single workflow globally. And in that they also transformed and improved their processes. And, uh, and that was something that they, they couldn't have uh, accomplished with really any other project or really any other tool in the market. Uh, they of course chose to, uh, to go down the path with, with ServiceNow and uh, you know, a short few months later they're implemented across incident problem change, service request service catalog, a very profound service catalog spanning literally hundreds of request items, employee self-service portal that's been branded to their, to their corporate brand, so there's been a lot of excitement in their end user community because they look like their company when they're, when they're asking for support and they get a much more automated and, uh, and much more efficient process. And what was the genesis of that? Was it, again, something that was breaking, they had to change it? Was it, let's just take a step back, there's an opportunity that we wanted to do this? Or were they using ServiceNow in some other minor uh, role and said, wow, you know, we can actually use this tool to, to take advantage and do, do something transformational. And generally what we see is ServiceNow is really the enabler. It's the enabler to transition and transform. Now we've seen global SIs do this forever. That's their big thing. We're going to help you consolidate and get your hands around it. I think ServiceNow really gives you the, the ability to, to do that neutral of a partner or, or neutral of, of an outsourcing provider. You can get your arms around it on your own. And again, many customers are relatively mature in incident problem and change, and so it's a good opportunity for them to find those areas where they can aspire to better practice, better process, and to implement that into ServiceNow tool. How has your business evolved? I mean, it's so interesting. I mean, we, of course, the poster child of, of SaaS is, is Salesforce. You guys obviously you know, chose well. That was 1999. Yep. Here we are in 2013. It's really taken a long time. You know, Google Enterprise, okay, that makes sense, but Google, you know, big whale. I see you know, guys like Workday, uh, you know, service now come out. Why do you think it's t taken such a long time for these applications to catch on? And and how has Cloud Sherpa's you know progressed over those over that time frame? Well, what I would say is the notion of a cloud services brokerage didn't exist eight to ten years ago, right? Mm -hmm. That that aggregation point didn't really exist. It was those point solutions were always provided by those point providers or their tightly coupled uh, uh, partners in that space and. Of course, with the emergence of, of this notion of a brokerage that's helping aggregate and manage and enhance those solutions, you know, we're seeing a lot of degrees of freedom. So, you know, where we started, we started as a firm that was uh, focused on Google, that emerged into Salesforce, and now is through acquisition of a company called Navigus a few uh, earlier or late last year. Uh, now the service now practice as well. And uh, you know, moreover, it's it's uh, it's where things are going, right? The, the truth is, is that uh, uh, end users and, and corporations, and, and whether it's you on your iPhone and for personal use or business use, you want those applications available. You want to have a, a solid user experience. ServiceNow is really first in this space to be able to offer that in a way that was you know, truly platform neutral, that just worked, whether it was a smartphone or an iPad or a, a, a desktop or laptop or what have you. So talk about your strategy, Cloud Sherpers, and talk a little bit about how you differentiate. Well, we differentiate in a number of ways, but specific in the ServiceNow business unit, and I, I don't think it's, it could be said enough that cloud services brokerage is a huge differentiating point for us, right? Having the scale that we do globally, having um, you know, several key strategic partners uh, enables us to see areas and aspects of the industry that I don't think other partners can. Um, but from a ServiceNow business unit perspective, I think we have a, we have a couple, um, couple differentiating points. One is, we were one of the first adopters of the platform from a partner perspective, so obviously we have a lot of deep skills in this. We've done over 320 implementations of ServiceNow to date, and, have, and, and, and of course through 320. that. 320. Yeah, over 320. 
And, uh, and through that history, we've seen, we've seen a lot of heuristics. We've seen a lot of uh, customer success stories. We've seen a lot of, of things in the platform that customers are asking for time and time again. And we've been able to fit that need, both by, by IT service management, but also by industry as well. A great example of that is we've got a number of custom applications that we've developed. One of them is a, is a document management, document processing application that a lot of legal firms are using. In fact, what we found is we built it for one company uh, a few years ago, Morrison Forrester, better known as MoFo, and uh, now five or six legal firms later, they are all asking for that same application. And so we're finding that there's also you know, a real opportunity from an industry perspective to, to align to some of those point solutions, extend the platform, and just include those in the solution. You hear so much today about big data, uh, and you know, it's all about this unstructured mass of information, and bringing structure to unstructured data, maybe blending structured and unstructured. Um, some people don't even like those terms, because it's all sort of blending. How does analytics play into this whole IT service management, IT automation? There's a lot of metrics, so, so they get this, you know, automating this forms-based process. Is there a place for that, or is, is there not right now because everybody's kind of doing their own thing. You know, 10 years ago, IT was all about the T in IT, right? It was all about the technology. Now it's all about the I, it's all about the information. Um, a great example is we're seeing a lot of partner solutions emerge in the ServiceNow ecosystem that are trying to better uh, rationalize data. There are tools like Mirror42, for example, which its whole purpose is to, is to bolt onto ServiceNow and provide a more comprehensive analytic package. And there are many other examples of that as well. Uh, in truth, it's a services-led operation at this point. It's, it's not a technology-led operation, and the only way to really ensure that you're delivering any quality of services or support is the quality of data that you provide. And that starts with your requirements, and those requirements need to bridge to performance measures, and those performance measures need an easy way to be accessible, transparent, and manageable. And of course, that's a big part of what ServiceNow does. So how do you see this cloud brokerage you know, space evolving over the next three to five years? What's going to change? You're going to hear a lot more from cloud Sherpas in the space in the next three to five years, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, you know, I think what we're going to find is, uh, is that uh, more and more you're going you're to see uh, GSIs and other types of firms moving to this sort of model, right? I mean, we're, we're, only, we're going to take a lot of business away from them. And, uh, and in that process, you know, it's, it's going to get the right levels of attention. You know, what, what I really think a cloud services brokerage is, it's a, it's a firm that is extremely experienced in the platform and the products they sell, but more importantly, the underlying reason for selling that product in the first place. You know, services, IT services in this case. Um, it's a company that's known for being a little bit more nimble than some of those GSIs. You know, getting the proposals out quickly and being effect, effective and efficient and not looking to establish this enormous agreement, but, but a series of agreements that gets a customer to, to where they need to go. And I think what we're going to see is, is time and time again that the, the, uh, the early adopters in the cloud services brokerage space is, are, are, going to be, are going to be growing at, at rates like our business unit, for example. Our business unit's currently growing at 150%. Um, it's a tough, a tough job to keep up with, but tools like ServiceNow certainly help us manage that and uh, keep us on track with our own projects, our own time cards, and our own tasks. Yeah, so you guys are on the, on the rocket ship with, with <laughs> ServiceNow. On. Pulling them along, are they pulling you along? A little bit of both, like bikers drafting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, excellent. All right, Jason, well listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing the Cloud Sherpa story. We'll give you the last word here. What advice would you give to folks that are you know, maybe kicking the tires. Ooh, supposedly 30% of the audience here are not ServiceNow customers. Yep. They're thinking about it. What would you tell those guys? Uh, have a good understanding of where you're at. Have a good vision of what you want to achieve and don't be afraid to go to the cloud. It's not as, not as hard as it sounds. This cloud's not scary. Just jump right in, the water's fine. <laughs> All right, Jason. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Uh, good luck with uh, managing that crazy growth and uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks very much. All right. Jeff Frick and I will be back with our next guest. Keep it right here, this is theCUBE. We drop into these events and uh, we're covering wall-to-wall -wall ServiceNow knowledge. We'll be right back from Las Vegas right after this. <laughs>